you have an agenda? A public copy of the agenda? We don't have an agenda. Oh. We're just going to wing it, I guess. You see what happens? Okay. myself back on the scaffold and I looked behind me and the end of the scaffold was right here so I'm past balance somehow I don't know how I did it that it has a six foot height limit you know there's crossbars on the end I think what I did is somehow I got down and hooked my arm around that crossbar and did a backward somersault off of the scaffold and when I came around from the weight and momentum to straighten my arm out and I landed on my right hip and leg and oh. ended up with a cracked pelvis. So that could have been worse if your head would be. Yeah, it could have been, been my last day on earth. But, so. Where was all this? We're here in our building we're making a fire machine. Some ceiling work and the ceiling is 12 and a half feet up there, so we were climbing to get up there. What's that going to be? 1952, they built that as a Sinclair station and it's right across First Avenue from 122 Borders. And then it was a fishing hole for a while. Oh, and that's a place. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, we tore all the remodeling out of it and... Jerry Erickson had the fish pool around. Yep. And Delphi bought it. I don't know what 
make that just a standard. Yeah. Make sure we show up. You could have said, Whoa, you probably would make that. <laughs> you and your grind bell. Yeah. <laughs> Those dark bangers. <laughs> I got a call from someone who was at the game yesterday, Sunday. They were there at the Blue Falls. I know where they are. They called me. I said, well, what, what are you calling me for? You hear this. Took the cell phone and phone and they were booing up there when Aaron Rodgers fumbled the ball in the five yard line. What were they booing? I said, no, not on TV. I said, no, it would be on TV. <laughs> they were there. They had to call me, I suppose, just to tell me what was really going on at my number one. <laughs> the boom birds. <laughs> we sympathize with you. It's okay, Al. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've had our fair share of Vikings heartbreaks, so. They weren't all right to bring back Brett, were they? Nobody was there. Was he really? What, did he get the uh, another award? Yeah, yeah. Okay. put the numbers in the name of that Maybe he left at halftime then, too. <laughs> 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 the ball. I've got a couple of injuries left in yeah. quarters or whatever they're playing. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, go to the whole business. One thing uh, we'll talk about is we're going to high school. What's happening up there in the broadcast system? Did you get that? Yes, we did get our broadcast committee. Okay. We it's up and running. It's functional. We've used it about six, eight times already to do the events. And it's working well? Works great. Yeah. And you also want to talk about your MREA recognition? Sure. So uh, we applied um, our Flyer Media Productions group, that's our student group that does all of our broadcasts. We, uh, as a district, nominated them to receive an award from the Minnesota Rural Education Association. Every year they they hand out two awards for uh, profiles of excellence, and this year, um, Flyer Media Productions took second or took first place in that award. Um, and so, any any program within the state, not just you know broadcast stuff. That's any. It could have been a professional development for teachers idea, or you name it, could have been nominated. And, but they selected our our students in our Flyer Media Productions group as the statewide winner this year. So our uh, our advisors will be attending a banquet up at Craven's uh, November 14th, I think it is, to receive the award and uh, in that recognition. And then we've been asked to also bring our mobile unit up there to have on display for people to to see what that looks like. And so it's an exciting, uh, exciting opportunity for us. And also let everybody know about the MSDA. Sure. So MSDA, the Minnesota School Board Association, has caught wind of what we were doing. And uh, we've been asked to, in the past, to provide some student um, videographers to help them with their video services that they run during their annual winter conference in January down at the convention center in Minneapolis. And so this year they caught wind that we had one of these trailers that can do a mobile production. And so they asked us to bring it down and have it be on display in their, they call it a show and tell area. Um, and we said, well, we will agree to bring it down, but you have to agree to let us do three live shows from the convention center. And so we have three shows that we will live stream on the web, but also record so that we can bring back and then air on 
Channel 181 later. So one of the shows is going to be um, students talking with um, the executive directors of MREA, um, the Minnesota Association of School Administrators, the Minnesota School Board Association Executive Director, and um, the Secondary School Principals Executive Director for the state. And um, there'll be a panel discussion. We're going to have students um, writing the questions. Um, they'll actually even be able to tweet questions in. We will live stream that, and our hope is that we can get some of the other um, schools within Region 5, which would be Morrison, Crow Wing, Wayass, Wadena, Todd Counties, um, to be involved in this as well and, and live stream it back to them and let them ask questions via Twitter um, that they would like answers to. So it's going to be a, it's going to be the future of education from from a student's perspective, what 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 questions do they have about about what's uh, coming down the road? And um, we're excited about that. We're going to do one show. Uh, we're trying to line up uh, TSP is the uh, is the architect doing the, the construction projects, the design of the projects for the district right now. Uh, we're going to try to do a construction show with them and Contegrity Group. Uh, both of them have displays and booths down at this convention already, so we're going to try to get them lined up. We're still working on that. We haven't got confirmation from them. And then the last show is going to be a school board member panel. So we're going to have our superintendent, Steve Jones, is going to moderate the discussion amongst five school board members from around the state who are there at the conference um, on the state of it, of, I mean, there'll be a discussion about education in the state of Minnesota, exactly what it's going to focus on, I don't know yet, so we're, we're in the planning phases for that, but that'll be the third show that will that'll broadcast live from there. We'd love to do, to you know, be able to put it right back live on channel 181, but the capability of, from what the convention center has for us for internet access won't allow us to create a private um, network for to talk directly back to us. We'll have to live stream them to the web, record them, and then bring them back in here now, again. But the nice piece about that is that all three of those shows are going to have a, a reach for, for Little Falls, definitely, but have a broader um, audience as well. So pretty excited about those. Sounds good. Anything else from high school? We did uh, we did our first live telecast from the football field on uh, last week on Monday. It actually was a soccer game, girls soccer. So we have that all lined up, and so we are all set to do Wednesday night's game against I believe it's like Foley uh, live on channel one eighty one as well as live streaming it to the web. So, pretty excited about that. I watched some of your drone footage of the cross country meet. That was pretty neat. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? Yeah. On 181? No, we didn't put it on fire. Something. Ace Torberger. Yeah, something. Kevin Jordan put it on. Oh, hey, report from Mark. Okay. Um, well, since our last meeting, um, a lot has uh, been improved here. We've moved forward, uh, adding more programming, um, combination of um, archive programming, kind of a throwback Thursday stuff, as well as new events and things that are happening in town that I'm filming and then putting on the air and also sharing on our YouTube page. Um, we've also, I don't think we had Heather Jorgensen on board yet at our first meeting, but she's now back on board. She's doing our um, community advertising um, graphics that go on our um, on the TV. 
she's taken care of that. She used to do it for years with Jerry Abraham, and I thought, what a great resource to have her come in and, and continue with that. Um, I'm looking to bring in, um, this week I want to post uh, a notice on our station that we are looking for volunteer camera people to help out with um, filming events that we might have to do. Um, it's tough filming an event with one camera or one person with multiple cameras. Um, I just have to run around too much and so I, I'm going to look to get some volunteers that I can train and in the very basics of video camera operation and get more people involved here as possible because we do have uh, several uh, local organizations have expressed interest in coming back and doing some programming uh, monthly to bi-monthly um, uh, and one group even wants to do it weekly they're, they want to move to doing it weekly, but they want to start out every two weeks. And that way we'll be getting fresh content on our, on our station and uh, hopefully uh, pick up a few viewer, viewers here and there. So you're still doing the uh, church? Oh, yeah. Church show? Yeah, they're running Monday, our Sundays and Mondays. If we turn it on right now, we have probably a church program going. Okay. Uh, we've also been running the uh, candidate forums. Um, I'm down to basically, I guess I can't think of what the schedule is for them, but I was starting out twice a day, about three times a week. Now I'm down to once a day, four times a week, until the elections are over. And then, as always, doing uh, city council meetings, which we have one up tonight, um, uh, not school board, but uh, county commissioners, every two weeks as well. We've got, uh, we're getting the studio <coughs> back into shape. Um, we've got, you might have seen some tape in here. That's some, some proposed um, wall space, so to speak, we're, we're considering. Nothing is uh, solid yet, but uh, we're, we're considering some, some changes in here make it look a little more professional when we start having groups come in. We don't want to look like the, the back room. We want to look like a TV studio. Okay. Do we have any equipment? Oh about? yeah. Um, gosh, now it's been, I'd say, close to a month now. Friday, between a Friday night at 6 p.m. and a Saturday morning at 10 a.m., the main server that was our broadcast shorted out. It, it essentially just burned out. So we were without um, programming for about seven to eight days, I believe. Maybe it was longer. Maybe it was 10 days um, until we got the necessary equipment and parts to, re to, to adapt our, our, our other system that we already had in place put that into operation and uh, pull out the old stuff. It was the cable cast server uh, that burned up. We're lucky that the box itself is built to put flames on. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. Food and fire. It was uh, the, where the uh, hard drives were connected. That whole connection just completely melted, and it looked like there was probably a flame of some sort in there, um, a lot of smoke um, on the top of the metal case in there. So it it, uh, it was a quite a situation that uh, could have been worse than what it was. Fortunately, I think it was designed so there's no you know flammable parts inside there. It, it's going to short out. It's going to do its thing and then it's just going to cut out. But we had to call in uh, Pete Booney and he, uh, he got us up and running again. And did our connections, re networked us, and we're, we're good to go. Well, maybe with Samsung, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be a concern. <laughs> Anyone have any questions for Mark?
No, it's not a good thing. Good job getting things organized again. That's good. Good to hear that. I would I would like to know how many you know what uh, how many charter cable subscribers we have someday to kind of know what our potential viewing audience is. Um, it's about it's just under a thousand people. Oh so. um, yeah. no, two, sorry, two thousand because it's fifty cents a subscription. Subscriber. Oh, okay. Get okay. Just under a thousand dollars. Is is there any uh, records that show subscribership over a period of time? I can pull that information. I'd be curious to see that if, if we're losing subscribers, because um, I have heard from talking to people in the public that chart is expensive, and a lot of people don't have it because of their expense. And I'm just wondering, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of stuck right there, you know. Well, ever since uh, a couple of people went back to charter from you know, either Dish or Direct, one or the other, and uh, they went with the Spectrum part of it. They said they're saving a little bit, but they're looking at a couple of years down the line, it's just going to out. The source what they had before, so they're kind of leery of it. Mm -hmm. But right now they're getting by a little bit cheaper than than what they do with. It. Okay. They got to go with all three bundles. Oh, that'd be cable, phone, and internet. Yeah. 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 Depends upon what package they get with the uh, cable TV. It depends upon how many. Uh, megabytes uh, internet service. Mm -hmm. So there's always a cost increase on each of those. Cable is up against you know a lot of competition nowadays. It's you know virtually free. Netflix is just like nine bucks a month. You've got um, all kinds of access on the internet. TVs are now, you can buy the smart TVs, and you can watch your computer on your TV and not watching regular cable networking, cable broadcasting. So I wonder, personally I wonder, you know, 10 years from now, what would this be like? Is there going to be a charter system anymore? Some people claim yes, and others claim no, so we'll, we'll wait and see. As long as they can keep making money, they'll keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. They're pretty big all across the country, Charter. Yeah. Any other questions for Mark or anybody? Mark, just uh, if for the volunteers that you're looking for, just touch base with Dave. We've got a number of younger students that um, we're getting some experience. We'd love to get them more experience. Mm -hmm. That if you need some camera operators, could help you out. Yeah. I, I've tried that, and so far, they haven't helped out. Nothing. And okay. you know, that's why I'm going out to the, the general public. Okay. Um, I'll take them from anywhere. The students, the general public. Um, I just want to have kind of a a, a, a small group. Yep that will be reliable when, when needed. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff happening in this town, and I, since I live out of town, I can't always be here for everything. I would like to have some capable people that can, like on a Sunday afternoon, sure, pop up to one of the parks where something could be happening and, and film right. the event there. And, um, I think it'd be so useful just to get the people so people in, involved in this you know, enterprise yep. here we have. Yep. We have a program at the school. Is that Katie you already run that? Katie Rivers. Oh, Katie Rivers. The career one? Yeah. Out? Yeah, Katie Rivers. We run a career deal where they partner kids to stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, that might be something that she might be willing to look at possibly. Okay. Yeah. Getting into that and having a couple students get involved in that type of a program and then they would get credit from the school. Oh. Okay. And they would be able to 
do something with that. I think there's, her name is Kate Ritters. Kate Ritters, okay. And uh, <coughs> I don't know her telephone number yet. Yeah, I think Which, I have her email address. Okay. So Joe's got an email okay. I could possibly email. Yeah. Because also when we're, when we're filming, uh, sit down things in, in our studio, you know, our group comes in. I'd like to have at least one camera operator. We, we set up three cameras in there. I would be up in the crow's nest switching, and then we, I, it'd be nice to have one camera operator just down there to make adjustments as needed during during whoever is doing their programming. Um, and that would be like during the middle of the day, typically. And that's where a student wouldn't be useful, because they're in school. That's why I need to go out to the public so I have someone you know, throughout the day. Well, some of these kids are available during school in the Cape River program. Oh, okay. You know what? On the job with people. And, yep. And they do go get out of school. They program their day in school. And then they be able to put an hour somewhere else or two hours somewhere yeah. else. Because a lot of things, that's what it is. It's just the one to two hours. Yep. And they wouldn't be responsible for the editing or processing or any post-production at all. It would just be a matter of giving me the media. But would you be open to kids that would want to do some of that? Because Absol the program, absolutely. The, pro the reason I ask is the program Jay's talking about is a four-day a week for two to three hours each day. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, typically we're looking at kids that. Well, we have a couple of kids that have already indicated that they have an interest in getting into broadcast television now. Whether they go through this internship route or not, I don't know. Um, but but if they knew that there would be a possibility available to them to do something like that, they may be more inclined. But some of these kids are just outstanding at graphics. Um, they do switching and they do some of the post-edit stuff for us as well. So. I mean, they would, they'd be able to come in and do a lot more for you than just sure. sit and run a camera if you wanted them to. Um, and, but, you'd have to see. You'd have well, to see if they're interested in the communication with yep. Kate to see if something like that could work out. Yeah, I, I was totally unaware of that, that program at the school. And yeah. it sounds like, you know. Because we've got they, kids that go out on a farm. Yeah. That thing, and they learn about uh, milking industry, for for example, and they work on this with this dairy farm, and, and they do that on a, a semester basis. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the kids that have gone to uh, oh. yeah, students writing for the record right now. We have had kids working at uh, Emblem Brenny that are interested in mortuary science. We had kids. Um, I don't even know where they all were last year. Uh, we've had kids doing a business with Inez Consulting. Um, I wasn't I wasn't involved in the program last year, so I don't know where they all were. But there's a lot there's a lot of opportunities. Basically, a kid comes to us with their interests, and we try to pair them up with somebody in town that can help them with that. Mm -hmm. Because we, we could put them to work uh, typically once a week mm -hmm. and up to three times a week. Mm -hmm. you know, a couple hours here and there for events that we have in, in here or out there. Right. And the other, op the other opportunity for you to look at is, is Rural Minnesota SEP through the Workforce Center. They have programs for youth where they can um, actually pay the kids to come to work for you doing the tasks that you need them to do while they're getting experience in a high demand job area. So Katie also works with that program so she'd be a good resource for you to connect to so okay. you can get some kids involved. I need really reliable kids. That's, that's what I would be interested in is um, Number one, reliability, because I can I can train them to do the other things. Yep. You can't train reliability. <laughs> They've right. got to have that on their own. Right. 
So yeah, definitely uh, I want to start looking into that and probably by the next board meeting here, you know, I would like to have those, those groups uh, working with us. Well, we'll have to explore it. And yes, see what's going on. absolutely. All right. Let's go on to number three, which is I'm making up here as we go. So. <laughs> A report from John about well, the latest charter. There is no latest because the, um, the local government representative from charter that we had been working with on the franchise renewal is no longer there. Uh, she took a position somewhere else, and we have now have a new one. Uh, and this was as of a month ago, and I haven't heard anything from Bob Bills as far as what the status was from our last call back in the end of August. So, the status is no news. Interestingly enough, that guy called me one day about something. He said, so you guys run one of the channels up there? I said, yeah. How's that working for you? I said, well, if you guys would be willing to give us the channel in HD, <laughs> we'd be really happy. But I said, right now, we record the whole thing in high definition, and then I can show you the pictures of how we scale it down, all the equipment it goes through to get to an analog signal to go out to charter. He goes, well, that's kind of a stupid idea now, isn't it? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, it really is. He said, well, we really should look at what we can do to fix that problem. So, right. did you get his name and number? Yeah, really. yeah. And where he lives? <laughs> and and his blood what, type? We're both in his house. <laughs> so, I, I mean, he actually seemed like maybe he was a little bit more reasonable, willing to work with us. So, that has, as we, Move forward with this, maybe they'll help us out. Cultivate get, that. Yeah. Get wow. things where we need them. But does he know that there's two stations in this town? <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That can take. Also, <laughs> yeah. Can you guys yeah, really friendly to introduce him to John then? Yeah. Yeah. If we turn that TV on, you would see the, on the, the low definition <laughs> that we're sending out. But the low TV in our office there is what we're sending to Charter, yeah. which is beautiful. Yeah. But what comes out isn't. <laughs> right, what comes back to the viewer is not real nice. And that's one of the comments I've heard from viewers too. It's like, it, it's just so bad. You know, they just say it's bad TV. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> as far as signal. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to, uh, Mark, do you want to give Chuck and Mark that information from that guy? Maybe you can communicate with them also. Yeah, I'll get that number. That's about you too. Then well. you've all got my email, television at greatart.org. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, anything from the council? Do you think we're going to have a resolution on this anytime we soon? The last, when we ended the last call, it was actually within 90 days. We we're supposed to get something back that we we're closing on. Well, almost 60 days right now, so. And you got 90 days from? The end of August that we were. I know, but who did you get that information from? Well, it was with the attorney from the Charter and our attorney. Oh, so they yeah, those. We got something <coughs> together that they're going to. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know how you back the truck up once you go there, but I mean, we've done. I mean, do we suggest telling Charter at this point if they have an end date or shut the switch off if we have 2,000 consumers that have their TV shut off one day because they're not serious about a franchise agreement, maybe they can be nudged. I mean, I don't know if we're in that position yet, but I think it's a good grief. Let's get this done.
Okay. Anything else for the <coughs> board members have any questions about anything? Pretty well cover we'll the cover. situation. Not that much happening. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Well, there's things happening. Kind of interesting with programming and stuff that we've got going on. It would be nice to get this picture resolution taken care of. I mean, that's been hanging for a long time. You'd think there'd be something, some way, someone could figure out how to get the information down to St. Cloud other than hand carrying a, a tape down there. Well, we, we did do some investigating of that at the school end, and um, everyone who we talked to said about it, and we talked to a couple different vendors on it, said, you want Charter to own that process, because it's not just a matter of, okay. of the transmitter that you're going to stick in. Right. That transmitter has to match up with whatever they're going to have on the other end, and you don't know what that is. So I know that at one point we had kind of a price estimate from mm -hmm. Charter that was very rough. Yeah. But that that's definitely the way we want to go because we could put something in and spend thousands of dollars on it, and it doesn't match up with what they have on the True. on the back end. So you kind of have to be a little bit at their mercy, unfortunately. But as Lee said, if we can get this thing done, then we can start to move forward on something right. like that. What do the schools down in St. Cloud do with their signal directly over to Charter? That's a good question. I've been meeting with Gary next week. Why don't you find out why couldn't we send a good signal down to the St. Cloud schools and have them sidebar it right over to Charter? And then the whole thing would be an HD. Yeah. Instead of dumbing it down and then try to reconstitute it at the other end. I mean, maybe there's a way we can sidebar this transmission yeah. signal that we've got. Yeah, I don't know. Is Check it out. Well, it's a thought. It. About it. They'd send it to St. Cloud School? Why not? But do they... A school to a school. They're, they, they're operating directly with Charter down there with a high quality signal. I mean, maybe we can do something like that. Who knows? We can talk. I can talk with Gary. Yeah. Well, at the very least, they're going to know how they push their signal. Exactly. And there's all the other schools down there, you know, that that have uh, programming at St. Cloud level. And there's Rocory and all the others are pumping in signals and have their own mm -hmm. shows and whatnot. So. <coughs> Maybe there's a way. Who knows? All right. Make a motion to meet be adjourned. Third. 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 We're done. Yeah. When's the next meeting? We have that. Mm -hmm. Usually, we might go two months. Mm -hmm. Two months. January. January. Third. Third. Uh, Monday would be. Third uh, Monday in January. Holiday. Uh -huh. that's, that's going to be a holiday for Martin Luther King Day, so you can't meet that day. What's the, what's the date? No, that would be the 16th of January. So we could go the 23rd, though, right? Yep. January 23rd, 1 o'clock. Here? Look for me. I can't wait for my letter from Wendy. <laughs> I get a letter. Yes, I am. Uh, no fooling around here. What's my name at the top? Is it called GRA or GRA? It's GRA. That's a long time thing. It's a, it's, a, it's one of those things that just annoys me because we're not an association anymore. They started Great River Arts. Yeah, we could be. <laughs> it started that way way, way back in the late seventies. That was because they were the Morrison County Arts Association. So they had Lindy Lent Barbers and a Barber Shop or whatever and HSO and all those people. Well, only Great River Arts. <coughs> yeah, so GRA.
sorry. Yeah. I've been trying to keep. Well, I figure after you know. You know all this you know, information it still has. I know. Well, I know, and it's. It, I mean, the thing is, is it. It's really not a big deal, but I just keep putting, you know, I just figure eventually people will catch on. I saw people within my organization that call that. Oh, I just, it's it catchy, is. Not. It's no, a it's just something. 